when you guys said, let's do a podcast on fog of war, like I literally, this is just blank. <laughs> and, and I'm like, like, I know the point is like, come with a story about how that's played out in your life. And, I, and I'm like, how do you tell a story? Like, it does, I don't, there's not this concrete thing. And I like, part of me is going, am I just under the fog of war here? <laughs> and uh, but Alex is actually our perfect example. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we don't have to go that direction. Yeah. If that's not what God has for us. Why don't we pray and um, see where this goes? Jesus, uh, we consecrate Ransomed Heart Podcasting to you. We consecrate today's um, conversation. We consecrate to you what it is you want to do, um, why you brought up Fog of War and what that means for our listeners. Uh, so come, lead us, guide us, guide us in our conversation. Lift the fog enough <laughs> <laughs> that we can talk about the fog. And so come and fill this. We want everything to be filled with you, God. In your name, amen. Welcome to the Ransom Tar Podcast. John Eldridge here with Alex Burton, Alan Arnold. Um, decided to let you in on kind of what it sounds <laughs> like before we actually start these recordings because it's so illustrative at often, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? For one reason, um, this isn't all, you know, polish and pizzazz here. This, this is real and true and true to life and right? unscripted yeah. and one of the commitments we have at ransomed heart is a podcast every week with where we are at life so that's why there's different people there's different topics some longer than others we really let it go where god leads and uh, today's a great example of literally walking in and talking and watching where god leads the conversation yeah because we knew it was on your heart alan to do to do a couple podcasts on the fog of war. It's a right. it's an expression that we use a lot around here. Right. And one that I think as we begin to describe it for our listeners, they'll go, Oh, that? Yeah, I'm super familiar with that. How would you define the fog of war? Yeah. Cause it's a little foggy to me, John. <laughs> <laughs> this is a symptom of it right here. It is the collective effect of the spiritual assault that comes against us combined with the loss of clarity of who we are, clarity of identity, clarity of mission, clarity of what's going on right now, I think mixed into um, the numbing effect of the world. Mm. So you kind of put those three things together. You know what? Here's probably what would even be better. Describe what it's like. Like describe the symptoms of it. I think people will resonate with that. You know, like symptom is God spoke something incredibly beautiful to you last month, a couple weeks ago, yesterday, <laughs> and you it, you can't even remember it. Like, yeah. like that's gone. That that's one. Mm -hmm. What are the other symptoms of fog of war, Alex? Currently, this moment, <laughs> yeah, a blankness of mind. Yeah, like man, I guess the the easiest way for me to get at it, John, is um, we we did an event recently here at Ransom Heart with a a few key um, allies that we brought in. And so it was a small event. We finished the event on a Friday evening. We all had the weekend. The event didn't go into the weekend. And, and so I just kind of treated my weekend like a normal weekend and, and got to Monday. And on Monday I needed to come back into the outpost and get a, get a few things cleaned up from the event. So they were just menial tasks, you know, washing some dishes and putting things away and, cleaning up the living room, all that kind of stuff, and kind of got those things done that day. And then you had sent out an email saying, guys, you, I think we underestimated this 
you all need some soul care. Yeah. Take a couple days off and tend to yourself. And I went, oh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty wiped out. And uh, yeah, and so I took Tuesday off. And oh my gosh, I I think I spent most of the day drooling on myself, <laughs> like. And, <laughs> And I couldn't tell you what was wrong. You can't name it. I can't. I couldn't name it. Yep. I couldn't put my finger on it. I couldn't pray it off. Yeah. Like I just had no clarity of this is where I am and and this is what I need in this moment. Mm-hmm. And and man, it um it actually took until the end of the day. I I went to actually a spin class at the. Um, which for Jim, some listeners who don't know what that is. A gal up front, kind of with a Nazi-esque voice, <laughs> tells you how to how quickly to spin the bike that you're sitting on that's stationary, that's <clears> sitting <throat> on the ground. You're not moving anywhere, but it's a workout, and they beat you up pretty good. Yeah. And I, and I actually needed that. I needed something to kind of wake wake me up. Yes. And then once I came out of that, then I started to— to go, oh man, I've been under it and mm. was able to begin to pray some things and and find some some relief from from mm. the fog of of war. Yeah. Yep, that's uh, it. For me, it's the same thing like that we were coming in to talk about this and I was like I, I'm blank. And and actually, Alex, to your point, that I think is spot on for why we're talking about it today, because it's a, an awakening. It's kind of a, a sensory, wait a minute. And it helps me a lot of times when I think of fog of war, if, if we say it in terms of, well, I'm not really in a war right now, so I, I can't have fog of war if I'm not in war. But then I have to pull back and go, John, to your book, like Waking the Dead, we're in a world at war. Mm-hmm. So fog of war doesn't just come after some huge crisis, although it certainly does come with a mission or a crisis, but you can be having what feels like a very normal week. But if you're trying to walk with God, I think that the tactic of the enemy is to keep you in a fog as much as he can. Yes. And so for me, when I start feeling like, who am I again? And what, what am I, why am I doing what I'm doing? And, and that may be because we're about to do a boot camp, but it may be, a normal Wednesday. Yep. (laughs) And it's like smelling salts to go back to God and his word and go, let me get back to who I really am and why I'm, why I'm in this mission of walking Mm -hmm. with God, running with him. And so in that context, I probably have fog of war weekly, you know, and now I'm naming it and identifying it. And that's the first step, I think, to awakening and clearing Mm -hmm. the fog. George McDonald has this great line, where he says, but he who would be born again indeed must wake his soul unnumbered times each day. You know, he and, and, and he, he had been writing the earlier stanza is sometimes I wake and lo, I have forgot my soul has drifted out you know, on an ebbing sea or on the tide, you know. Mm-hmm. And I always just describe, here's another symptom of it. Here's something I think folks can relate to. You wake up in the morning, God does not feel near. Right. Jesus does not feel real. Yeah. The kingdom does not feel important. You get up, stagger out to the kitchen, make a cup of coffee, kind of begin to move into your day, but fairly numb, mm-hmm. right? Not, not an excitement about the intimate presence of Jesus, you know, it's just, uh, you just kind of feel like you're going through the motions, and we're pretty committed to the daily prayer here, as you know, gang, and we mention it a lot because it works, and mm-hmm. and you just think about how you feel when you get done praying, and you've kind of come back to yourself, right? Right. And the difference that it makes, yep. you know, that would be a good description of fog of war. When have you, John, recently experienced it? Like what's in the last few weeks? This morning. No, literally this morning, because we had a staff meeting here yesterday that was pretty extraordinary. And that's not, you know, it's not everyday life at Ransomed Heart. We're not all, you know, living on a cloud here. But we had a pretty extraordinary experience yesterday with God, prayer, worship, and our staff 
does set intentional times aside, you know, so that we continue to stay tight with him. And it was one of those times that that was special. This morning, gone. I mean, less than 24 hours later, this incredibly rich experience of God, gone. Oh. I had to fight my way back to it. It feels like pushing through jello or mud or slogging your way through the fog, yes. you know, you're pushing through to come back to clarity. And for me, it took not only prayer, but going back, sitting down in my office, opening the scriptures, reading, praying some more. I mean, it, 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 took, a, it took a bit for me to kind of come out of that. Yesterday's high was gone. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, um, I mentioned earlier before we started the podcast that it was actually a helpful category for Alan to bring up at the beginning of the week when he said, hey guys, let's do a podcast on the fog of war. And it got me thinking about it and very confused and <laughs> what, what the heck am I going to say? What, and yeah. uh, this morning I, I actually gave some time before I got up to thinking through this. And I was asking Jesus, like, mm. what? Um, wh why am I having a hard time with this subject? And he said, because you're under it. Mm. And then he started showing showing me. And to your point, we've had a couple of meetings as a staff on your new book that's coming out, yeah. John, and and going through that together. And it's it's a really beautiful and hopeful stuff. And to be honest, there's a part of me that's not been able to connect with it. Right. And it's bugging me. Like I, I'm I'm having a really hard time with it. And I wasn't able to identify what is going on. But this morning Jesus revealed it. Like, no, actually there's there's some cumulative things with the battle that's been mm. been going on the last month or so that mm. So, and you've kind of been under, yeah. and um, so it was, it was really helpful to identify that this morning um, and be begin to pray toward that, into mm. that with Jesus. So That's huge. Yeah. I think the word cumulative is really important mm -hmm. yes. uh, for our listeners that, as you were saying, Alan, it's not necessarily that something blew up. Mm -hmm. This isn't necessarily crisis or, you know, you just returned from your short-term mission trip to Uganda. You know, right. it, no, not necessarily. I think more of what we're describing is a cumulative numbing effect right. of a series of mm, battles, disappointments, mm -hmm. setbacks, pressure, weariness, you know, and it just builds yep. till you find yourself in the fog. And you can yeah. find yourself in that daze where it starts to feel like the new normal and and you can't right. really identify mm. even when somebody your spouse says mm. what's going on and you're like i i don't know like i don't know i just don't mm. feel myself and i think that's a big tip off that the fog is there because mm -hmm. god doesn't ever i've never experienced him creating a fog to confuse us or to disorient us mm -hmm. in that way like that is a ploy of the enemy and it's very subtle sometimes. I mean, the fog starts very small and builds and builds. Mm -hmm. And John, when you were starting the podcast and you mentioned sometimes we forget something that we've known, uh, I heard a word every year. I asked for the theme of my year or whatever word God has, like you've encouraged us to do. Well, the word I heard this year was the word change. One word, not a whole, not a 20 word verse, not, not some complex paragraph, one word. And a week ago, I was sitting down trying to talk to God about some things, and he said, well, remember your theme. And I was like, um, what is it? And it's <laughs> like, we're only a few months into the year, like, and it's one word, and God spoke it to me, and I could not remember for about 30 minutes what that word was. Mm. And so I went back to the journal, and looking back at it, it's almost humorous to go, why didn't I see that as, as fog? And why didn't I see the mm. enemy's role in that? I just looked up the definition this morning to see what would a secular definition of fog of war be outside of, of maybe how we would identify it. But it's interesting how close it parallels. It says, the term seeks to capture the uncertainty 
regarding one's own capability, adversary capability, and adversary intent during an engagement, operation, or campaign. And man, when the fog of war comes, it's amazing how often we miss the enemy's direct assault. Right. He hides himself, yeah. and we start to think it's all us, yeah. our family, our right. job, yeah. Right. Yeah. our okay. circumstances. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think I can feel one of the effects of this podcast already for our listeners, and it's, you're kidding me. You guys? Like, this isn't just me? Really helpful to name. This is a normal experience for the human condition. This this is normal. And even among very dedicated followers of Christ who are trying to, you know, kind of live a consistent life of, of spiritual practice that keeps us from the fog of war, even then, it's just good to know. It's, it's a part of the human condition, right? And and good to name some of the symptoms of it because the fog is actually not normal. It can feel like it's your new normal. And when you're in it, it sure feels like the only thing, right? Right. You know, I'm thinking of the silver chair when the children have finally found Prince Rillian down in the underworld and the witch has got him, you know, under a spell and and she throws the incense on the fire and she starts strumming her frustrating little instrument and and she starts saying things like you know there is no sun there never was a sun right and and the and the children start going there is no sun there never was a sun you know when you're in it it feels like what is true yes it's not it's not it isn't what god has for us it's not the normal Christian life, but it is something that every person faces. So just the kindness of that to go, yep, even to the best of them, this happens. Yeah. I think too, the one thing I've experienced with it is it actually isolates you too. Like the the effect of the fog of war, in some ways it, it just feels shameful to say, but like um, having been under it very recently, you know, I can feel things are off and I can feel it like it ain't right. And yet there's just this part of me that's completely ambivalent and mm-hmm. unable to go, guys, something's not right. I need help here. Mm-hmm. It has that effect of just kind of isolating you in it. And and like you said, John, almost, almost that like you just kind of become so numb and so caught up in it that you just sit in it. Well, yeah. Alex, and as you as you say that, like with the fog does, I think, isolate you from other people mm-hmm. because it causes you, it's almost like if you think of yourself in a fog, you can't even see the person three right. feet away. Right. You feel like you're the only one there. And all of a sudden motives of other people start to get hazy right. and foggy. And, and it's another tactic of the enemy, obviously. But I mean- how cruel of an attack because not only do you start forgetting who you are, but you start questioning those around you who you could go to and go, hey, man, I feel a little bit under something like because all of a sudden their motives are suspect or you feel like they don't mm-hmm. want to talk or they're not there for you. Right. And yeah, it's like a double whammy. It separates mm-hmm. you from God and others. Oh, yeah. it's so shameful too because yeah. when you kind of know you're a little taken out, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> You do retreat. I retreat. Yeah. I don't want to be the schmuck. I don't want to be yeah. the low guy, you know, the weak link in the chain. And so you pull back and and it only adds to it. Just a couple more symptoms of it. What, if we could name a few more symptoms of the fog of war. I think for me, there's a very big difference in my life between things that restore me and things that simply bring immediate relief. You know, a long walk in the woods restores me. Um, a bag of cookies brings relief, yeah, but not restoration, right? And you know, being by water and and there's not a lot of it in Colorado, but I when we can get near water or get to the ocean, like that's so restorative for me. Uh, you know, watching loads of television, it's simply relief. Yeah. Um. That would be like a symptom of is that I'm drawn towards 
just relief stuff. When I'm in the fog of war, I don't think restoration. I just think, I think I'll just watch some television tonight. You know, it just I think I'll continue the numbing effect. Yeah, or I'll, I'll just uh, keep sleeping today. Yeah. Honestly, that, that one day after the that Tuesday, I spent a good part of that day just <laughs> sleeping. And and part of it, my body did need yes. some rest, but part of it yeah. was just, I don't, like, don't want to face the world. I don't want to get out of bed. Yeah. I don't want to face the world. I'll just stay yeah. in bed. Mine swings the other way, which is I'll get a lot done. Like if I'm not feeling close to God or if I'm not feeling myself, I can at least be productive. Mm. So I'll get 25 things mm. checked off the list and I'll fix that thing in the house and I'll go get the oil mm. changed on my car. and Just lots of activity. Lots of activity that mm. on the surface, like you're saying, it it feels good, like things are getting done. Yes. I'm making a contribution yeah. and it has nothing to do on a soul level with how I am. Friends, we're not going to leave you here. We do want to turn a corner and talk about how to get back in the sunshine the things that do work to burn off the fog of war. Because you hear us even through the podcast chuckling a little bit at this, because we just know this just isn't true. It doesn't need to be a reality. There is a way out. It's not our normal. It doesn't need to be your normal. But it feels like we ought to save that for next time. In fact, the day that we were recording this podcast, the daily reading was about the fog of war. And we didn't know that. And it was excerpted from Waking the Dead. And it was just talking about the longing for some clarity and how hard clarity seems to come by these days. And wouldn't you give your right arm for some clarity right now in, in your life or your walk with God or your inner healing or whatever it is? And so we were struck by, if it's been a while, or you haven't read Waking the Dead recently, basically the whole first part of the book is designed to evaporate the fog of war and kind of reorient us and, and bring, bring clarity. The other thing I wanted to mention that I have found really helpful lately is throughout the scriptures, you hear God described as fire, um, our God as a consuming fire. And the Psalms rejoice and they say, fire goes before you and consumes your enemies. And of course, the famous stories like Elijah of calling down fire from heaven there on the top of Mount Carmel. I think those resources are actually available to us. And something that I've found very helpful is just, um, God, I pray that your fire, your fire would burn up this fog around me. I pray that your fire would consume all of the confusion and, and the discouragement and the disorientation and, and just the numbness that that I live under. Lord, um, let the fire of your love come down right now to my life today and burn away all the fog of war in Jesus' name. Just thought those couple of things would be helpful to you. You've been listening to the Ransomed Heart Podcast with Alex Burton, Alan Arnold, and John Eldridge talking about the fog of war, and we're going to pick the conversation up next time. <laughs>